Hello, welcome to the presentation of the paper Modeling of Energy Management Systems Using Artificial Intelligence. I'm Leonardo Benitez from LabSmart, research lab in Smart Grids in Federal Institute of Santa Catarina, Brazil. First of all, what is AI? It's the field that tries to perform computationally tasks that are usually attributed to humans, like interpret an image, understand a text, organize knowledge, or learn. We humans, we learn through experience, and computers learn through data. So this data represents how the system should behave in this situation. So instead of building a model, first understanding the rules, and then codifying them into a software, and this software will give us the answers that to this situation we should behave like this. We'll present to the computer data that represents how the system should behave in those situations, what we want the computer to learn, and then we'll, the output of this will be the rules that we'll have to follow to, to take this. Uh, the rules that this domain have to map from input to output. And to build this type of model, to learn automatically from data, we can use several techniques, for instance, support vector machines, decision trees, neural networks, among several others. And what are energy management systems? They are systems that provide to the user feedback about how he is consuming the energy. So it involves monitoring the energy consumption and the energy expenditure, identifying errors, non-conformities, non-normal situations, and through a process of management review to help to define energy policies and to plan the usage of energy to have a more efficient and more conscient uh, process of consumption. And if this process is continuously done, the aim is to achieve, when this process is continuously done, we expect to achieve long-term results and really reduce the energy bill. And all this process can be audited both internally and by external auditors. And how machine learning is being applied to energy management system? One possibility is to forecast the energy bill. So how much will I expand in money? How much will I expand this month, next month, in three months? Another possibility is to identify consumption patterns among several machines or several institutions, several industries. For instance, identifying clusters of industries that have similar patterns of consumpt consumptions and that we, analysts, humans, may want to analyze them together or to perform certain actions in, in the entities of this, of this cluster, you know, perform certain, to apply certain energy policies to one specific group of institutions, for instance. Another possibility is to operate automatically and maybe more efficiently systems of heat ventilation and illumination. So those three are very specific applications but in general, we can analyze big amounts of data, so uh, non-structured data and very confusing data, a lot of numerical values that will be very hard and time-consuming for a human to analyze. We can automate this process using machine learning. We can help decision-making in general, so help managers to, to take more informed decisions and analyze the system with more easiness for instance, using those uh, big data analytics tools, and in general to obtain new insights about the problem. And in this context, what is the objective of this specific paper? So we build a model for the electrical consumption of one building of the ministry's esplanade, that is the Brazilian executive government headquarters. And using this model, for, first we evaluated the precision of this model, so how good this model can predict the energy consumption of the building and we analyze the possible applications of this model in the context of energy management system. So going beyond just predict the energy build, uh, the energy consumption, sorry, what else can we do with this model? And all the data set and Python codes are open and available on the web. The first step to build such a system is to collect the data. And we already had done the Pejain project, that is an energy management platform that uh, monitors in real time the energy consumption from several institutions, several public institutions in Brazil. We do not measure directly from the grid, 
we read the information from the energy matter and send this information to cloud and have an, a web platform to monitor in real time the consumption and have some insights about it. Using this infrastructure of PGN project, we collected two years of data, including electrical variables like voltage, climatic variables like the temperature, and time-related variables like the hour of the day. Each sample refers to 10 minutes of measurement, and that's already an aggregation. Originally, we had data every one second, so one second uh, during two years, and we aggregated to 10 minutes intervals and other operations that were performed so with this down sample to 10 minutes we removed some outliers so errors or of, of measurement we normalized the data to make it easier to train the models and we integrated different data sources climatic data sources the electric data sources and the final result after this data cleaning was a data set with 85,000 valid samples so data points rows in a table and all this data is available online and here we can see a time series of two months of this data and we can see here that we have climatic variables temperature pressure precipitation and wind speed we have electrical variables so the voltage of the grid and the power factor and because we are aggregating over 10 minutes we can calculate variables like the standard deviation of any variable over this interval and if we calculate the standard deviation of the power factor and of the uh, our output variable that is the the power consumption so the power consumption is the output variable in this in this modeling and we can also calculate the load factor that is the maximum over the average and we also included some variables related to the time of the day hour the day of the week and which month this data refers to Using this data, we trained the model. We used the cross validation methodology, so we took 70% of the data, used it for training, and the rest, 30%, used it only to test the model. And we used an ensemble of six techniques, so we used six different techniques with different stretch and weakness, and aggregated them to, to, do, to, aggregated them to the final, uh, in, in the final model. Each of these six techniques were trained independently. So each, each of these six techniques were trained independently. And when presented to new data, for instance, uh, this data from one, one day of measurement, this is an example, one day of measurement. And when presented to a new data, each of those techniques will independently predict the output. And then we use it another model that we choose the random forest model to aggregate all these all these predictions and to give the final prediction for instance in this case this was the final prediction of the power consumption to this specific day so we trained these six models we integrated the six models using the ensemble technique and here we can see an example of how we did the the, the search for hyperparameters it was an heuristic search so we tested several values and choose the ones that gave better results and always taking into account the heuristic of Occam Razor that if we have two different models that can equally well predict the output variable we'll choose the simplest one so for instance in this image referring to the the hyperparameter maximum height of the random forest model we can see that between 25 and 30 levels of the tree doesn't make much difference in the error, doesn't improve the model. So we will choose 25 or 24, 23, because it doesn't improve anymore to keep uh, building a more and more complex model. And after training this model, we evaluated each one individually using the metrics of mean average error and root mean squared error. Those two metrics will give the value in the physical variable, the physical unit so in this case uh, kilowatt the, the power consumption but it's quite difficult for a manager or non-technical person to understand what exactly does it mean for a model to have a uh, 10 kilowatt of mean average error so we also use it the percentile error that is just the value of the mean average error 
divided by the average value of the output variable that gives a more easy to understand evaluation of how good the model can predict the output variable. And another way of evaluating the, the models are plotting a graph with the predicted variables, uh, sorry, the predicted values of the output variables and the real values because we know the real values for the test set, so we divided the data between training and test and for both data sets we know the output variable, we know the, the power consumption so we can evaluate how well did the model predicted in test data set. And here you can see, so plotted in orange is just a line, uh, y equal x line, it will be the ideal situation. So the best possible model is when we always predict the exact same value as the, as the real value. But of course, and the, the blue dots are the, what the system really predicted. And you can see here that it's, it's symmetrical. Uh, so sometimes we predict a little more, sometimes we predict a little less. That's a good indication that the model is being able to capture uh, the, the phenomenon happening. And this is for the final model, the assembled model, and analyzing the ridge regression that was the worst model in our assemble. Analyzing this model, we can see that it doesn't really capture very well the data because in some situations, it, it predicts always too little. So when the consumption was 500, for instance, the, to this specific dot here, the model predicted 400. So to some specific values, it always predicts a little less. Then sometimes it always predicts a little more to, to specific ranges. And then again, it predicts wrongs again. So it doesn't really capture very well. And that makes sense because ridge regression is a linear model, so it, it's not complex enough to model our phenomenon. But assembling several models with different we weakness and stretch, we can overcome this, pro this problem and have a final model that is more accurate and best suited to our application. So, we already have a model that can predict the energy consumption. What else can we do with this model? One possibility is to analyze which input variables are more important to the energy consumption. We can use this using several techniques, for instance, the input perturbation method, or to analyze the, linear coef the coefficients of the linear equation of one linear model, for instance, the ridge regression, that's a linear regression. And here we can see that the, the power factor is the most important variable to predict the energy bill, to predict the energy consumption but not always will have the power factor available. So if you are trying to analyze if right now the energy is above expected, so to this specific temperature and to this specific hour of the day, how much should we be consuming? This will be the output of the system. And then we compare that with the actual consumption. It's okay because we will have the power factor that we are consuming right now. But in other situations, we will not have the power factor. Then we will have to we will not be able to use this model and we will have to retrain without this variable. For instance, when trying to predict the future consumption. So uh, given the weather forecast, how much will I, con will I consume next month? In this type of application, we will not have the power factor available. So removing this variable from the model will lead to a higher error because it's a very important variable, it's the most important variable in our system. On the other hand, if you are trying to predict without the precipitation value, if we don't have uh, uh, the precipitation from our measurement systems or from other forecast systems, this will not lead to a higher problem because this is not an important variable. Another possible application of this system is to give a precise evaluation of energy efficiency actions. So if you have a model that was trained with past data and now we change to another energy policy, we can compare the, the consumption after this change with the predicted model, the, with the values that were predicted by the model uh, that were trained with data from before this action, and here we'll have a precise evaluation of how much we are saving with this new energy policy. So in this work, we developed a predictive model for the energy consumption of one specific building, and we can predict the energy consumption with a error of 5% and this is a good result comparing with other results in literature 
and we compared several models in the text in the task of predicting the the consumption and we, we analyzed the applications of this model in the context of energy management system and now we will have some time for questions i have some extra materials explaining some more in more detail some parts of the system so now we'll have time for questions or to explore these these extra materials thank you very much